Hey there, this is Nat Newell, uh, Pacers editor for the Indy Star, here with Nate Taylor, our Pacers insider. Obviously, the big news today was Paul George did not make one of the top three All NBA teams. That's gonna that means he's not eligible right now, right, for the super max, which, which would give him allow the Pacers to pay him one more, give him one more year on his contract, about seventy seventy five million dollars oh, more only, than only, another team. Only seventy million. Yeah, only seventy million. <laughs> Um, I, I just first let's get your reaction. Does this surprise you at all? No, unfortunately, it doesn't. And I put this on Twitter a couple of days ago, coming back from Chicago at the NBA Draft Combine, and it, it's a great event because it allows you to talk to your peers and people who cover the, the teams that are in the lottery or teams that are um, maybe thinking about trading up or down in the draft, and just overall national reporters who cover the league. And I asked. I don't know, maybe 25, 30 people uh, who who, ha- who I said, do you have a vote? And once they said yes, I said, did you vote for Paul George? And I would say two-thirds of them said no, um, just because I thought that although he is a talented player, and you can't deny that, there's still a sense that he didn't play well throughout the entire year pre-NBA uh, All-Star break. And because of that, and because I think it's dumb that the league <laughs> still designates it based on your position... Um, that we allow three centers to be top 15 players. I, 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 I don't, don't understand. I, yeah, I, I, don't don't, understand. I don't know. There's only one, and he's <laughs> Anthony Davis. And there was some discussion as to whether or not uh, he would even be allowed to be voted as a center or a forward. You could sort of pick. Thankfully, the most of the 100 people were smart enough to vote him as center. a center. Yeah. Yeah. So that gave Paul a chance. That gave Gordon Hayward a chance, too, from, from Utah, the, the former Butler star, that maybe they could sneak in into that third team slot, but unfortunately it doesn't happen. Jimmy Butler is there, and that's basically who beat out Paul George and what, Gordon Hayward based on the, if you look at the votes. What surprised me was that uh, Jimmy Butler had 102 points. They they give you different mm-hmm. points depending on first, second, third team. Uh, Paul George only had 40. I'm not I'm not necessarily surprised he didn't make it, but for it to be a 60 point spread with Jimmy Butler, Day, Draymond Green was the other 13 forward. Right. He had 134 points, I believe. Which again, I mean, it wasn't even close. I mean, that's yeah. what surprises me. I. I know the Warriors are great. I know they're great. I know they're historically good. But, like, Draymond Green's the fifth best forward in this league. I, I'm just, I'm not certain of that. And I just, it, it seems like they're, Paul George, it, for his, what he does defensively, to me, would put him over the top. I would have put him on the third team. I don't have a vote. You did. You You're, do. And I you did. did. Yeah, I did vote. Um, yeah, let's make that clear. I did vote Paul George as, like, my last forward on the third team with Jimmy Butler alongside with him. And uh, what, uh, I mean, there's there's a long way to go, but this was obviously the biggest domino to fall yeah. for the Pacers and, and Paul George. Where are they and what happens next? This, um... This pretty much signifies that the odds are really stacked against the Pacers because the biggest chip they had in this whole scenario, and there are several, was the idea that, hey, we could give him the most money, and not only could we give him the most money, but we it could be a drastic difference between what another team could offer him for a long-term extension or for what the Pacers could offer, which I guess we calculated around $212 million, which yeah. would make him one of the highest pay, paid players in the league, but that's not available now. And the only way it could be available, and we both think that this is low in terms of odds of what could happen, is if the Pacers don't trade him, if Kevin Pritchard is of the assumption that, well, we can't sign him to an extension and I don't want to trade him, uh, you could play out the final year of his contract, which you know rarely happens in today's sports <laughs> industry, but he could play out the final year of his contract if he plays as well as he did towards the second end of the season, the whole season next year. Maybe he is on the third team All NBA. Maybe he's a second team All NBA player, uh, depending on if guys get hurt. And that would give you the chance to give him the Supermax following the final year of his contract next summer. Uh, that would be July of 2018. But that seems like a long shot. You're, you're taking an awful chance with your Pacers <laughs> on getting him on that Supermax and then losing him for nothing if you don't. Or you can right. lose him for nothing. Cause then, cause Even then, if he is eligible for the Supermax. Right. And he is, he is from LA. He is a Kobe Bryant fan, thus meaning he's a Magic Johnson Lakers fan. And the Lakers, I think, are getting more and more confident that we're going to really persuade Paul to become a Laker in 2018. Maybe not this summer, but there is that assumption that, well, no matter what happens, whether Paul gets traded to another team that's not the Lakers or if he stays a Pacer, that they can really convince him, hey, you you played out your contract, 
maybe the Pacers don't go to the Eastern Conference Finals. Maybe you get swept by LeBron again, and you can come out west and and you can wear that gold and purple uniform that you've loved for so long. Um, I I just wonder, but from from your perspective, Nat, what do you do if you're Kevin Pritchard at this point? That's obviously the first question we've got on on here. Um, not being privy to the conversations between Paul George and okay. Kevin Pritchard, it's hard to answer you, oh, that. If we, oh, if we could be in there. Yeah, I, I have to assume. I mean, and if Paul George tells me he's going to re-sign, because the Pacers can still offer him more money, a fifth year mm-hmm. and more money. I, I think it's all around $180 million yeah, versus you, $130 million for what other teams can offer. And depending on his years of experience based on where the cap is structured moving forward, you could get either a 30% of the of the max or 30% of the salary cap for the team or a 35, depending on... Well, that's where the super max comes, comes in. The biggest play, difference right? if he's not a super max player is the Pacers can give him an 8% raise and one more year. Everybody else can only give him a 5% raise. Um, but if you, have, if you don't think he's coming back, I think you've got to trade him. Assuming you think you can get something of value... Uh, you know, can you get one of those top three picks? To me, the problem with that is if you get a top three pick, you're just hoping you can get a player as good as Paul George. And there's you almost certainly come out on the short end there's of that no, trade. Yeah. As, as, many, as much as people like Lonzo Ball or Mark Hill Fultz or I love Josh Jackson, there's no guarantee those guys are going to be as good or as talented or can do as many things as Paul George can right now. Uh, we got another question. Uh, they can uh, other teams can only give them a four year deal. The right. Pacers can give them a five year deal. That's what that's all where a lot of the money differences come yeah. in um, in terms of the overall figure. But uh, um, and so, I mean, where do you like? I mean, do you, what, what are your feelings? Do you try to hold on to him, or do you think they have to deal him? Assuming he's not going to resign, obviously. The, with with the way the lottery went out, and now that you have a chance to sort of get some competition going between the Celtics and the Lakers, if they if they want to trade for him now, and Philadelphia also was supposedly interested. That's true. In the and they have the, the yeah, and they have the number three pick. With the way the lottery panned out, with the way today panned out, unfortunately for the Pacers. I'm. I think the odds are, are just stacked against Indiana. I think he will probably be traded. I, if you're Kevin Pritchard, the question is how much can you get for Paul George? Because he's not, you know, sort of designated as an All NBA player, even though we both agree he's one of the top 15 <laughs> yeah. players in the league. Which is another argument for another day. Just how much can you get, and can you get a bargain situation on the opposition, or can you make two teams? fight it out for Paul George's services and, and how much compensation can you get back. And hopefully drive up drive up the price. Uh, obviously, there was a Paul George tweeted today um, <laughs> at a Bleacher Report story about Paul Pierce saying the Celtics should tr- trade the number one pick. Um, that, that's what surprised me most. It's like, it wasn't the Lakers. It wasn't the Lakers, it it was the the Lakers story. It was a Celtics story. And let's be very clear here. The tweet literally said nothing. The tweet said nothing. He retweeted. He, he replied I, to the story. Right. He could have called up the story, hit reply, and send by accident. And that's what would have happened. Seems like a lot of buttons to push by accident. But, uh, so who two. knows? It's, it, it, but, it's two. But I, I will say this. As someone who's on Twitter quite a bit. I've I've almost made that mistake several times where you say, "Oh, that seems interesting." You hit you hit the okay. I'm going to reply to this, and then you're like, "But no, I don't want to do that." Yeah. But <laughs> correctly, was, I hit the X button and not and the Paul sin. Apparently hit the not the sin button. button. Now, now he he deleted it. Who whoever's managing his Twitter account, whether it was him or not, we don't know. But he he deleted it within like a minute of it being available for public consumption. Now, the other thing, of course, is if he did mean something, if we want to read into this that he likes the Celtics or he wants to be traded to the Celtics, right. it only helps the Pacers in that it would imply that he's willing to sign a long-term contract with the Celtics. That would then give him, you, you theoretically would be, be willing to trade more for him. This is all, again, that we're speculating about a tweet that literally said nothing. Um, we got, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> we got another question here that asks uh, how hard it would be to build another team that went 42 and 40. The one thing, a question I have, and I tweeted this today, is you make a list of the margins of victory by the Cavaliers in the playoffs, and you rank them in order from least to most. The first four games are the Pacers. They gave the Cavaliers... They were all close. They gave they the Cavaliers a far better, four better games than either the Celtics have, one, with one game, obviously, mm-hmm. or the four games that the Bullets played. Or excuse me, Bullets. Wizards. Wizards. I, I'm old, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that, the, that the Wizards played. 
I mean, I, I, if you're Paul George, can you at least look and say, hey, maybe we're closer than I thought? Maybe the team that we showed up with the last two weeks of the season, well, I don't know why it took to the last two weeks of the season. But Lance Stevenson. Lance, Lance Stevenson. Stevenson. Um, I think that's going to play a little bit of a factor in there. Without Paul George, though, I don't think they're anywhere near a 42-40 and 40 team. No. And then complicating that is who's going to sign with the Pacers as a free agent if you don't have Paul George? You're going to build around Miles Turner, who's a nice piece. Mm-hmm. Who could, but, could be an all-star one day. But, yeah, one day being... One day uh, being, being four years from now, maybe. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess, I mean, these, I mean, how fast could they be a 500 team again if they lose Paul George? <sighs> Two years, maybe. But, but because you're going to... Sink to the bottom, and maybe you get a pick, and that allows you to get someone of you know these these two drafts this year and next year are supposed to be generational. We know that there's good players surrounding them. My issue though is if if you convince Paul to come back, I'm just not sure what free agent is out there. And look, let's the, the Patriots have the 18th pick of the draft. I mean, maybe you get someone who's serviceable there, maybe you don't. But who can? I mean, Gordon Hayward didn't get. All NBA. So, are you going to give us Gordon Hayward to to join a team that was forty two and forty when he just left a fifty one win team? Who could also give him more money? Could also give him an extra year? And there's Brad Stevens sort of looming in Boston. I, I I don't know how much this roster can really improve beyond just the fact that Kevin Pritchard has, has mentioned this to me before. Just the 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 label of continuity that if we go through year two together, at least we won't have to do all the getting to know one another trying to figure out our system, trying to figure out Nate, how he wants to play the rotation. And if Lance Stevenson is there for all 82 games, I know Patriots fans I'd love to hold on to that piece. Well, hey, if Lance was here for all 82 games, like, they would be better, which could be true. Um, yet Lance Stevenson is, you know, kind of got plenty of antics. You don't know how he's gonna, how his body's going to hold up for an 82-game season. Yeah. It's nice to have a little six-game six sprint uh, with a lot of money on the line and yeah, your career. He had, not, he had not stayed healthy prior to conjoining the Pacers, so that's not. certainly a, a, an issue. I, I just I don't, I, don't see a, I don't see a clear path. Uh, Kevin can make a lot of trades, and we can see where that goes. And he's been known to make trades, at least when he was a general manager in Portland. So maybe that's the best possible solution, but I don't know... What the Pacers have that's tradable that isn't named Paul George or Miles Turner or Lance Stevenson or someone who you want to keep on on the roster? Yeah, I mean, Glenn Robinson is probably your third best asset. Maybe Thad Young is. Maybe yeah, because what are you going to get? going to be expiring. What are you going to get in return? You're not going to get an impact player, and then you're losing them on your team. I mean, the the salary cap. I mean, what they have thirty two million or so. Yes, but, but that. Um, Teague's going to eat up at least two thirds of that. Twenty to twenty four of it. Yeah, if you, you gotta, if you bring him back. And then what does that leave? <laughs> and if you don't bring Teague back, you got to spend you, something on another point guard. Right. So you're, I mean, right. I just don't. And then the other factor is, of course, CJ Miles likely to opt out of his mm-hmm. contract. Now you don't have any shooters left, and <laughs> which is what you, this it's, team desperately needs. Right. So it's, it, I'll give Kevin Pritchard credit. In turn, you look at what he did in Portland. Mm-hmm. He took a team that was not very good and made it good. The Odin injuries, the Roy injuries, obviously yeah. were sunk that team. But he he, he made a, a really bad team, a 50-win team, which is not easy to do. Right. So I think Pacer fans should be somewhat hopeful that you know that he's now and running the the operation. Um, but yeah, I, it doesn't, there's not a clear path to a easy rebuild right. of this team or even build up if you can somehow manage to keep Paul George. Right. I know. I know the most the most recent question someone asked is if. If Paul does leave or if he's traded, then yes, that would open up a lot of salary cap, but could you sign another star? And I don't know who that star is the, that, that maybe is Gordon Hayward. The most positive spin you can put on that from a with a salary cap is if you had signed Paul George to the Supermax. He would eat the, everything. The salary cap is just... not going up as fast as Paul George's contract, so that is going to cause yeah. a problem. Not, I don't know if it's going to be a huge problem. We don't know what the salary cap is actually going to be. It's, it's projected to not grow up by 8%. You'd be paying Paul George 8% more every year. So, you know, there is some sense that you would have been hard to build, add to this team mm-hmm. with Paul George, too. I'd rather have Paul George and take my chances. <laughs> but you, know, right. and, you want me to put and, the positive spin on it. Right. And as much as you and I enjoy living in Indianapolis, like Indianapolis is not a quote-unquote destination for people to come. Like this isn't South Beach. This isn't L.A. Um, and look, the team doesn't hasn't, hasn't just – they haven't done well the last three years. Out of the playoffs, 7-seed, seven 7-seed. Seven There's not much 
recent success for you to sort of attach yourself to if you are a potential free agent or another star who might want to um, play for the Pacers. Uh, I, I think another thing, too, and, and I had written this in the Indy Star and reported it, um, the Pacers don't have to worry about this, but had Paul made their team all NBA and the Supermax was available to him, Paul George wants all of that money. Like, all of it. Like, there there was no... Everyone I talked to said, like, he would demand that much money. But there was some question that, within the organization, that would the Pacers be willing to give him that much money because of all the things you just mentioned? Salary cap structure, the fact that you're basically giving the entire half of the salary cap to a guy, and the Pacers had never paid anyone that much money at any point in their franchise history. So how how much could you really trust Paul and trying to build around him with that much money involved. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, that we've we've said, you've written all along that this is. There's no easy path to being successful, and I really think that had something to do with Larry Bird's, you know, stepping down. Mm-hmm. Not that Larry wouldn't take on a challenge. Obviously, right. his entire career shows that. But this this could easily be a five year re- rebuild, yeah. rebuild mm-hmm. or reload or however you want to look at it. Um, and I just don't see a way, you know, that that changing. I mean, again, I really think the best case scenario is um, do the Cavaliers blow out the Celtics, and does yeah. Paul George say, "Hey, maybe we're closer than I think we are"? If you're Kevin, yeah, if you're Kevin Pritchard, you want a, you want fo fo fo, you you want to sweep. And look, I think it, it's probably going to happen because watch, watching that game last night, whew, that was. If LeBron wants it to happen, you would think it would happen. So, <laughs> and he looks at the look, and they look, and this, and this also helps the Pacers too. If the Warriors win Game Three, then it sort of forces the Cavs to say, "Well, we don't want to give them extra days. We don't want right. to give them rest. We want to get rid of this series as much as we can." And uh, it, look, it's possible. There's a good chance that both the Cavaliers and the Warriors go 12 and 0 in the playoffs, and then you can sort of say, look, look, Paul, we're in the same boat as every other team in the East. Except sure. We're, we're, we might be close. We might. We, we might. We, we, hey, you, you, made, you made LeBron work, whereas no one else is doing no that. No one else has <laughs> done that so far in the five other playoff games between the Raptors and the Celtics. Um, is, there, is there anything that you think we, we have missed out on? I know some people have, have asked about the luxury tax. I know we're trying to explain that as best we can. Um, is, is I mean, is there anything else that you can think of, or I don't know they, what I mean, questions they've never got. paid. Uh, neither of us is a salary cap expert. They Pacers, um, I, I believe they have paid the luxury tax uh, once before. That was when they the brought re- in David West. Yeah. Traditionally, they have not wanted to do that. Um, they did have the second lowest payroll of a playoff team. They have come out and said we're going to we're willing to spend more. Mm-hmm. Um, they have exceeded the salary cap, just not the luxury tax. Right. Um, and again, could they let Paul George go, get a draft pick, get Gordon Hayward? You know, that's certainly possible. Um, the problem, but then you're going to have to pay Gordon Hayward the money you were paying Paul George, right. and, and then that's going to cut into your salary cap right. as well. So yeah, let, let's 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 ramify, and the ramifications are even further out because Miles Turner's on a rookie deal, and if he becomes All Star potential, which I think he could then you got to pay him at some point. So the the problem is is Jeff T got to pay him money. Yeah. Paul George is either going to stay out of his current deal, which is quite a bit, 18 19 million or you're going to extend him somehow. And then if you want to add Gordon Hayward or someone of his ilk as far as talent, that's another probably 16 to 22 million. I think it'd be more than that. Perhaps. Probably, I mean, I mean, I think the Hopefully we won't see as many deals in free agency this year that we saw last year where we were just kind of <laughs> scratching. <laughs> there's the less. There's it does. I mean, and there's less talented there's, players in this free agency and coming up, and there's a lot less money. I believe the right. salary cap went up like thirty three percent last year, or something like that. So you, you had to you, you had to pay Timothy Boscoff sixty four million, <laughs> and you saw some crazy deals. I don't think you'll see that as right. much. But again, the salary cap is going to stop going up. Right. And that's like, and as you may made a great point with Miles Turner, you're going to have you're going to have to pay people. You're going to have three if, if you over. if you keep Paul George or replace Paul George with another high ticket guy. You're going to have Jeff Teague, and then you're going to have to keep Miles Turner. That's going to be eating up at least 60, 70 percent of your cap. I mean, mm-hmm. and it's Pacers aren't the only one who have to deal with this. 
but no one else is, you know, they, you know, Darren Williams isn't walking through the door on a minimum contract like he does for the right. Cavs right. with the Pacers. So, um, you know, they're in a tough spot. It'll be real. I mean, this is the big, I mean, I, someone on Twitter the, uh, the other day noted that this week with the draft lottery and then the all NBA teams, this is the big, one of the biggest weeks in Ever. Pacers NBA history <laughs> and they don't play a game. Right. And yeah. the first, I think the lottery went well for them. It's three teams that have reportedly been interested in dealing for Paul George. Perhaps you can, you know, you can get a bidding war for them. Mm-hmm. Losing out the ability to sign up the Supermax contract, even if you didn't want to do it as an option, I think it was valuable. So, I, right. you know, it'll be, and now you got to make, and you, but you got, and now you got to make a decision on whether you think he's going to resign. And you have, yeah, and you have between now and I would say right up to about July 1st, because that's when free agency starts for, you know, we probably need to make this point for, for for fans like free agency starts July first, you kind of need to know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> when when meetings begin at twelve oh one on July first, so the 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 Pacers have between now and July or between now and the end of June. The draft is on the twenty second. Most teams like to make trades on draft day or draft night. Um, so if Paul is traded, it will probably be between now. And the draft, and it's hard to imagine that a draft pick not being exchanged in re- right. you know in return for Paul George. Right. So you got to think by the draft they're going to have had to make a decision. Yep. We had another question: Will they try to get rid of Monte Ellis and uh, Al Jefferson for more cap room? Obviously, they would love to. How you do that, I don't, I don't know. know. I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't. Would know. you trade one of them and your first round pick for nothing in return? That's tricky. I don't That's know. That's tricky you, because uh, because then. Based on I think based on league rules, you, you have, have to, to receive, receive something. something. Yeah. You have to, receive, and it, again, it can't just be well, money's being exchanged so that you take the less of the amount so that you have more cap space. Right. Like, the league has gotten away from those days. Uh, you have to actually get something back. So maybe a second round pick. Yeah, I just, <laughs> maybe a future second or two, or uh, and then, or you'd have to take on another uh, another salary. You know, you yeah, or you, you or you, you take know, on you, a player who's on a minimum deal, and you would basically waive them at training camp, so that for they would not be on the salary cap. But uh, it's hard to see a team taking on Monte Ellis or Al Jefferson at this point without some kind of inducement to do so. Yeah, that. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> good luck with that. Um, one more question I want to ask you: As far as All NBA goes. Are you in favor that we have the current model where it's two guards, two fours, and one center? Or would you like it to be positionless? Because this, this is where I'm going to call the league and demand a, a, a change. <laughs> I think, uh, number one, I don't think the media should be voting. Uh, oh, we, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's make that, that point, too. Uh, <laughs> what they, a dumb they idea. did vote this Ooh. year, and uh, um, but we will certainly look at that as a company. Other newspapers have not done it. I didn't feel, um, I didn't feel totally comfortable with it, but... It got to, once we realized what the situation was, it was too late to pull out, yes. or it wouldn't have been appropriate to pull right. out. Um, but I do think, I mean, pick the 15 best players or at least do what they do in the All-Star game and pick three front court yeah. players and two back court players. Right. Paul George is, um, again, I don't know, by the voting, it's, you can't say because you have to vote for a center. So it's hard to know whether he, people would right. have voted, would have voted he, for him. But right. i got to think he's one of the 15. I mean, he's 14, 15, 16 in terms of where he ranks in the NBA right now. Probably should be higher based on what happened at the end of the last year. Although I do understand people's yeah. Um, you know, being a little hesitant to do that because right. he's been a little bit up and down. Right, and I um, and I was I, I I thought coming off the Olympics, Paul would have been fantastic to start the year, but it, in fact, it was the opposite. He he sort of started well, t- petered off, and then picked up after he got what four days off at the All Star break. And I thought at something at the, after the All Star break, it seemed like he was a he took a different approach. I mean, mm-hmm. we've talked about this a lot. Um, Paul George is a great player. He does everything you could ask him to on the court. Um, I thought that you know he at the at the their last game before the All Star break, he says, um, "I really I need to take I need to take a break. I need you know I need rest. I need to get out of here." <laughs> Which I have no problem with him taking rest, and he probably should. Shut up, My yeah. problem is why is he talking to Nate Taylor about that and not <laughs> Nate McMillan? But I think he stopped. It seemed he like stopped he stopped doing that, doing that stopped after doing the All Star break. He kept stuff in house that needed to be kept in house. And this was not the first time he had done that. I mean, right. I can't imagine Larry Bird would have said he's going to play the four for us without having some indication from Paul that he would play the four. So there's been things like that from time to time. <laughs> but I thought, I mean, you had you wrote some in a story about the leadership role that he yeah. tried to take on. Um, it was Nate. It was a Nader or Kevin Pritchard talked about how 
he changed his approach. He tried different mm -hmm. things in terms of being a leader. I think that was me. And yeah, found a way at the end of the year, sort of found it. And I give Paul George a ton of credit for that. I mean, right. to, to, be, to recognize what he was doing, number one, to try to do it, right. to recognize that wasn't working and they needed to do okay. something else. Right. I mean, that's not an easy thing for anyone to do, let alone one of the best, your, your best basketball player. yeah. players in the, in the world. Right. So uh, I give him a lot of credit for that. I do think, tend to think that he took some kind of step at the end of last year. Now the question is, will he? Will the Pacers reap that benefit, or will another team reap right. that benefit? Well, just think, if he averaged 28 points a game, or close to it, next year, yes. which is what he did in the playoffs, four well, games, four games, folks, four games, it's and, not 82, the or other even thing, the 75 he played this year. The other thing, though, that we've talked about is that I think he can probably fit in on any team. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't he, need the ball. He, he scored a ton of points, but I don't think, he, he gives no indication that he want, you know, he needs right. to have the ball, needs right. to score a lot. Right. He'd be happy scoring 20 a game, playing good more defense, rebounds, more assists, rebounds, playing, yeah. being the number one defensive guy. Yeah. So, some people, some people criticize Paul for not focusing so much on scoring, but then you take away all the other things that he's good at too. Right, and you can see it. I mean, he didn't rebound as well or have as many assists this year as he did last mm -hmm. year because he's scoring more. But he shot better. Shot had better. his yep. best field goal, overall field goal percentage. I think he, he had, might have had his best three-point field goal percentage, mm -hmm. but wasn't. It was close to it. So, again, I mean, he's... He, he, <laughs> this is why you don't trade yeah, him, yeah, by the way. If you're Kevin Richard, you're like, you know, he's, he's, he's better, more experienced, Teammate seemed a good teammate. All indications are showed some signs of more maturity this year. Showed a little bit of leadership and is great at defense, rebounding, scoring. Not a terrible passer. It's kind of hard to trade that if, if you can't get anything close to equal value. Well, we're going to call it uh, quits on our Facebook Live here. Uh, Nate's going to write more um, about Paul George. Um, but come back to IndyStar.com. Follow us on Twitter. Follow Nate on Twitter uh, for everything. It's going to be a wild uh, couple of weeks leading up to the draft. Thanks, everybody.